Hello, welcome to the Friday, March 5th, 2021 edition of the Sands and Storm Center's Stormcast. My name is Johannes Ulrich, and today I'm recording from Jacksonville, Florida. In Diaries today, we have Xavier showing the reverse analysis of a Visual Basic script that then, well, loads PowerShell, uses some C Sharp, and in the end, process hollowing in order to end up with complete remote access. The initial script is really just a downloader that then downloads uh, the PowerShell script and uh, this PowerShell script then uh, downloads a DLL, which in the end will use a C sharp compiler on the victim systems in order to uh, create additional components of the payload. And the intent of all of these steps is likely uh, to evade detection, of course. And this script will also specifically detect if it's running in Sandbox IE by checking if a particular DLL is present. And Cisco released a number of updates again uh, to a day. The one update that's uh, labeled as high is based on a vulnerability that was uh, fixed in Snort back uh, late last year. I think September or so. Snort 2917 had a denial of service issue with its Ethernet frame decoder. Now, of course, Snort is now owned by Cisco and integrated in a number of different systems products so these products are the ones that need to be fixed now and this includes the 1000 and 4000 series integrated service routers catalyst 8000v 8200 and 8300 as well as cloud services router 1000v and the integrated services virtual router and if attacked using this vulnerability, an attacker would be able to exhaust disk space on affected devices. And VMware patched what it's calling an important vulnerability in VMware View Planner. If exploited, this vulnerability could lead to code execution. As it says in the advisory, an unauthorized attacker with network access to view planner harness uh, could upload and execute a specially crafted file leading to remote code execution within the log upload container. View Planner is used to benchmark clients and servers in virtual environments, so that's why you may have it running in the vulnerability was found by positive technologies. And with recent browser updates that I mentioned on the podcast, a common idea was to make it more and more difficult for websites to set third-party cookies. Now, we do have recently some of these CNAME tricks and such that people are playing, but browsers make it more and more difficult for websites and advertisers to track users. And of course, companies like, for example, Google that make their living off providing targeted advertisements are trying to find ways around this. Now, Google put forward a new scheme that they're proposing. They're calling it Flock, F-L-O-C, or Federated Learning of Cohorts. The basic idea is that each user will be assigned a 16-bit ID. This ID will essentially assign certain properties to the user. 16 bits, uh, 65,000 roughly uh, different values. Of course, it will not be unique necessarily for a particular user, but you can think of it as individual bits, for example, identifying whether or not you are liking certain activities. And of course, uh, this uh, will be created based on your browsing history. By itself, the proposal looks, well, better than current cookies, uh, but uh, in the show notes, I'll link to an article by the Electronic Frontier Foundation. And one sort of big point they're making is that, of course, anything like this uh, will not be used in isolation, but together with additional tracking methods. So uh, likely it can be used to more or less help de-anonymize a user. 
And up to now, attacks uh, that affect uh, the system's bias uh, were more or less uh, just used uh, by more advanced adversaries until uh, late last year, a version of TrickBot included a module that checked if uh, the bias control register that locked the bias was unlocked and if uh, certain bias regions uh, were changeable. And apparently uh, some motherboards uh, had this unlocked and as a result, uh, this TrickPod module, which also was called Trick Boot, would have been able to modify the bias. Uh, well, Supermicro now came out uh, with patches for affected uh, biases. So uh, definitely uh, check if yours is on the list. And well, it's always a good idea to check if there are updated biases for your system. Wouldn't rate this as an urchin patch, but uh, given that sort of ongoing interest, in attacks like this, certainly something that you shouldn't delay too far. Well, and that's it for today. So thanks for listening and talk to you again on Monday. Bye.